Oh, twins. This video is a video of solidarity to our brothers and sisters in Nigeria and also an explanation of what is going on for people that might not understand. Enzars has been a long time coming. I think more than 40 years. Enzars is the peak of a boiling volcano. Even though SARS has only been there since the 80s, the corruption in Nigeria has been swelling. It's an eruption of the corruption which has been going on for so long yeah. and the Nigerian people cannot take it anymore. The human rights group Amnesty International says it has received credible and disturbing evidence that Nigerian security forces shot and killed at least 12 people taking part in peaceful protests last night in the country's largest city, Lagos. Protesters accuse the now disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, of torture. Nigeria's president has appealed for calm while the army has denied any involvement. An indefinite curfew has been imposed on several regions, including Lagos. Nigeria has been a dictatorship for almost half of its life as an independent nation. Many of its citizens worry Tuesday's events echo the dark days of military rule. And they're determined to make sure that doesn't happen. There's corruption inside the corruption, and there's corruption inside that one too. Those Russian dolls, when you open up the Russian doll, and then there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one, and you're thinking, hold on, when does this stop? The corruption just doesn't stop. That's it. And, and each Russian doll gets uglier and uglier and uglier till you get to the core and you see the real nastiness of what is the corruption. It's rotten. It is. It is. It's rotten at its core. Yeah. But let's talk about what actually is SARS. What's going on, okay? So, SARS, what does it stand for, Raf? So, a special anti-robbery squad. That's it. Even the name's an ugly name. Why is it special for? Why, why is it special? Yeah, for what reason? Exactly. The things that are called special are always weird. Always yeah. weird. And it just reminds you of like, it was made in the 80s. So, 1992 actually. Well, 1992, you know. Yeah, we, yeah, we were born, but that's not, that's not the point. It sounds like something from um, a counterfeit movie. Special anti-robbery squad. And the logo. The which logo, the which squad? Isn't good. It sounds, it's like one of those logos you played a freelance for five pounds to make. Paint, it's paint, logo. paint, what up? 1995 windows. <laughs> All right, no, but SARS. Okay, so it was, they started in 1992 to crack down on armed robberies in uh, Lagos and in inner city areas. And the point of it was to obviously crack down on these things. But over time, these thugs took advantage of the positions of power they were in. And now they're seen stopping youths, particularly young people who, who might be dressed well, who might be, you know, living life um, in certain areas of, of Nigeria or just out on the street, just going about their business. And they seem to extort money from them. They seem to hassle them. And in recent times, um, killing. And why do they do it? Why do they do it? I put it, I put it down to one word, power. When man is given unchecked power, if that power is not withheld and not controlled and not managed and put into a system that will stop man from overdoing it, then he will overdo it. And if one person doesn't do it, then another person will. And there'll be someone that takes the And in Nigeria, the structure of the government and the paperwork and the way in which they record what's going on is nonsense. And it's been going on like that for a long time. Now it's come to a head. It's not just about SARS. It's about the government. It's about oil. It's about roads. It's about employment. One of Africa's biggest oil producers. It's the, it's the biggest. Nigeria should look like Dubai, really. So, but it doesn't. To tear the whole thing down, I think that's what some people are planning to do. And it's scary to think it, about it. It's, it's very scary. You know? it's, it's very scary. We're just talking from the outside in. Yeah. But but, but the, the reason why we're talking is because that is our roots. We are Nigerian. We, we And we have, for a long time now, uh, made that very clear. We are Nigerians. British well, Nigerians. Well, I was born in London, mate. <laughs> Dan, how much how much Yoruba do you know? Um, Baoni. Okay. Pele. What does that mean? Uh, Baoni means hello. But his favourite meal is fish and chips. Sort him out. Sort him out. Hey, hey, don't get me don't Ketchup. get me started on garland jollof or mayonnaise. Hey, uh, hey, stop it. Um, but let's talk about why this matters. On a serious note, this is as important as any other crisis going on in the world but it's just very important to us because we are nigerians and um there is a, a large population of nigerians around the world scattered all over different countries but particularly in the uk 
um, and fortunately there has been a, a large following and a large support for this movement, which is good to see. Yeah. This situation is different because the potential of what Nigeria has with the money that comes in and how hardworking the people are on a, on a mass scale and how big the country is, is such wasted potential. And there's nothing worse than seeing wasted potential, especially when it's obvious to see. Very good point. And, you know, 12 people have been killed by the police over the period of the at, riot. At, at least. At least at, 12. At, at least. You know, it's probably a bit more. But for a country like Nigeria, in custody, more people probably die every day on a, on a, on a, on a nationwide perspective. So is that number really high? Relatively, probably not. However, what it means that people have died on the front line trying to be... Um, Try to stand up for what they believe in. Try to stand up for the country, for the future of the country, for the future... Patriots. That's the word I was looking exactly for. Exactly. They're the trying future. to be patriots. Exactly. And the picture of the Nigerian flag with blood on it. You know, Nigerian people dying for their country. And, you know, something which you mentioned before. Who is culpable? Whose face can we see? It's not the president's face that we can see. He's not in trouble. From what we know, no one's really pointing the finger at him. Who should we point the finger at? And in addition to what you're saying about why is it so important, it's so important because we're at a point of eruption. This has been worse and worse and, and worse, and we're at a point whereby something needs to change. Now, this isn't the beginning of the NSARS movement. It actually started around 2016, 2017, where there was a plea to the government, and the government actually said they were going to change something. But nothing changed, nothing changed. And now this NSARS movement, which is this, this current one, which actually started around October time when there was a killing at the Delta State, um, at the Delta State uh, protest. Because there was a killing there, this is what sparked off this whole new thing. And we've taken it to a point where we can't look back. We can't look back. And if you look at the history of Nigeria, you can understand why. Now, Nigeria is a relatively young country. We got our independence in the 60s. So it's re really, it's less than 60 years old, this, this country. And never at, at any point in the history ha have all the people in Nigeria come together for one cause. And the only cause that we come together for is to protect uh, Nigerian jollof rice against Ghanaian jollof rice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and maybe do the shoki shoki. Okay. Shoki shoki. Or we dance the burner boy. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, but on a, on a serious note, yeah. you know, what we were saying was that what can we do to support and to help and maybe contribute to the effort to correct the corruption? I think number know, one in other countries. So I think what we can do is number one. First of all, number one, show support and showing support whether it's on social social media, making phone calls, or speaking to whoever we know in Africa to say, listen, even though we're thousands of miles away. We still, you know, we love you. Yeah. We, we, we feel what you're doing is the right thing. What's going on? Tell us. And tell and, us what's going on. And we can't offer anything physically, but we're with you. And I think that means a lot because for them, I think sometimes they think other oh, Nigerian brothers and sisters in the West, England, America, Europe, enjoying themselves. They've forgotten about us. They've gone there to enjoy themselves. We haven't. We, ha we haven't. We haven't. And we, we want to know what's going on. So just like Raf said supporting on social media it, it is helpful we need to keep talking about it if that's all we can do we need to keep talking about it making sure it's on the tip of our tongues and you know keep the situation alive so it can be dealt with because when this goes down and social media it the vibe and the hype goes down a bit there's still going to be a corrupt government so the constant pushing and um you know the constant sort of effort to change the way things are and provide solutions that actually make a difference on the ground that requires um, constant pushing. Exactly, exactly. So without without further ado, um, that's what we had to say about NSARS. We support everybody, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, and uh, please reach out, please keep learning, please keep listening, and um, please show your support in, in any way you can. Oh, twins. twins.